a daily space update for April 19th, 2008. In the news today, Expedition 16 Commander Peggy Whitson, Flight Engineer Yuri Malenchenko, and South Korean space flight participant Su Yun Yi boarded a Soyuz space capsule and undocked from the space station last night and headed toward landing this morning. Their Soyuz TMA-11 spacecraft safely landed on the steppes of Kazakhstan around 4.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time Saturday after 192 days in space. We're um, uh, seeing separation. Indicator is in Physical separation reported uh, between the two spacecrafts. We're waiting a uh, confirmation of an official time uh, from Mission Control Moscow. Any outside uh, interferences? We do not see any. FOD in the uh, docking assembly. Yes, you must guess so. I love Shuna. Yes, so. The Soyuz spacecraft undocked from the Earth-facing port of the Russian Zarya module at 1.06 a.m. and rapidly departed the vicinity of the station. Two and a half hours later, the spacecraft executed a four and a half minute burn of its retro rockets to bring the Soyuz out of orbit and begin the long descent to Earth. Reentry occurred at 4.06 a.m. and nine minutes later the craft was gently descending underneath its recovery parachute. For some as yet unknown reason, the Soyuz executed a ballistic descent rather than the planned entry. In spite of the higher G-loads and vibration from the steeper re-entry, all three spacefarers aboard the Soyuz TMA-11 spacecraft were, were reported to be in good condition after their re-entry and landing. The landing was approximately 295 miles west of the expected landing zone, delaying the recovery force's arrival to the spacecraft by about 45 minutes. Shortly after touching down, Malenchenko used a satellite phone to call recovery forces that had already been staged in the area in case of a ballistic descent and radioed that all three crew members were feeling okay. While unusual, ballistic descent isn't unheard of and is considered a safe reentry contingency. Similar situations occurred during the re-entry and landing of Expedition 6 and also the previous Soyuz landing when Expedition 15 returned home. Even so, the lack of communication and confirmation of the health of the crew led to some rather nervous minutes in Russian mission control and in Houston. ISS program manager Mike Suffredini. Mike, uh, an eventful day, but uh, one with a happy ending. Uh, your thoughts as you uh, learned with the rest of us on the helicopters about the ballistic landing and uh, the outcome uh, with Peggy heading home now. Well, let's see. You're always uh, 
concerned about the crew on any entry vehicle, and so uh, when uh, we had a few moments there, we weren't exactly sure whether they'd done a ballistic entry or something else, and uh, so we were very happy when we, when we heard that they'd done a ballistic entry, and in fact, even more so when uh, when we got word uh, from the crew that they were safe and sound. Of course, they're on their way back now uh, on the helicopters here to Kustanai, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing them here in just a few moments. You're... Um I'm always struck by the choreography of the uh, the Russian search and recovery forces and how quickly they uh, they can mobilize into uh, a non-conventional situation. Uh, what were you thinking about? Because uh, you're very familiar with all of this choreography. Yeah, they were. They're a very adaptive organization, and so uh, they, it was. Um, the most interesting thing about this is it's not easy to know exactly where the Soyuz spacecraft is, and it, it seems like uh, a spacecraft coming out of the sky under parachutes is an easy thing to see, but in fact it's actually more difficult than you think. So there were some moments where they weren't exactly sure where the spacecraft was yet and hadn't quite located, and at that point um, they had to be very flexible and figure out, okay, if it's this, what do we do? If it's that, what do we do? Um, but they're very nimble on their toes, and they're an outstanding organization, this team that we've worked with now for uh, several entries, and uh, always impressive. And so, uh, yeah, I was in the middle of it today, and, and uh, they showed us how good they are today once again. There will be some work to do, obviously, on a postscript, uh, this being the second consecutive ballistic landing that a Soyuz has encountered. Uh, any thoughts about uh, what uh, might occur as uh, an, an investigation or an inquiry might, uh, a technical inquiry might be mounted in this regard? Well, our Russian colleagues are very thorough, so I would expect another commission to be uh, appointed and uh, a thorough review of the data and, uh, uh, and a recommendation for uh, uh, what we should do to make sure we don't have one in, in the future. With Whitson and Malinchenko was spaceflight participant So Yun Yi. She launched to the station April 8th with the Expedition 17 crew, Commander Sergei Volkov and Flight Engineer Oleg Kononenko, under contract with the Russian Federal Space Agency. U.S. astronaut Garrett Riesman came to the station aboard Endeavour on its STS-123 mission, launched March 11th. He has served for the last few weeks as a member of Expedition 16. He remains aboard as a member of the Expedition 17 crew. Whitson returned from her second mission to the station. She served as a flight engineer on the Expedition 5 crew, launching June 5, 2002 and returning to Earth December 7th, after almost 185 days in space. She landed Saturday with a total of 377 days in space, more than any other U.S. astronaut. On April 16th, she broke the previous mark of 374 days set by Mike Fole on a total of six space flights. Yuri Malinchenko, a Russian Air Force colonel, made his third long-duration space flight. He spent 126 days aboard the Russian space station Mir, beginning July 1, 1994, and commanded Expedition 7 on the International Space Station, spending 185 days in space, beginning April 26, 2003. He also was a member of the STS-106 crew of Atlantis on an almost 12-day mission to the station beginning September 8, 2000. He landed Saturday with a total of 515 days in space, on his four space flights, making him, not, making him have the ninth highest total of cumulative time in space of all humans. And that's a space news update for April 19th, 2008. You can watch or listen to our archived podcasts at our website, at www.dailyspaceupdate.com. For more space news on Expedition 17 and launches and missions around the world, please visit the Spacearium at www.spacearium.com or spaceflightnews.net. And be sure to listen in and watch our next Daily Space Update.